In this episode of Gaming on a Budget, we're going to be taking a look at the Hisense 55R6E3 television and doing a capacitor repair on it. Hope you enjoy. What's up guys, it's Nova Joe and uh, I got a problem. I've got a clinker. This here is my Hisense 55R6E3 4K HDR television. Bought it two and a half years ago at Walmart on Black Friday uh, for a great price of $250 and well it died the other day particularly after playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with the kids it made a popping noise and then the TV started turning itself on and off now I wanted to do a video on this television because apparently uh, this is a TV that a lot of people were interested in because when I made that video two and a half years ago uh, showing off my new purchase and everything I got somewhere between 15 and 20,000 views on that video it's one of my highest viewed videos to date uh, on the television of all things so I thought this would be uh, a good video to show you guys how to repair this TV now to repair this television uh, you first need to know what the problem is and I'm going to show you what that problem is right now Okay, the problem lies in the circuit board here. Apparently this is a problem that has happened to more than just my television. Uh, first thing you need to do is there's eh, three, six, nine, there's about ten screws here that you need to take out of the back. It's just a regular Phillips head screwdriver. Now, let me give you a warning here. If you are somebody who plans on fixing this television yourself, you need to disperse the energy from the television. Uh, unplug it, let it sit for a while, and make sure to hold in the power button for about 30 seconds. This will help disperse all of the remaining electricity that is in the television. So like I said, make sure to unplug it. Definitely don't do this with it plugged in. So unplug it, let it sit for a little while, and hold the power button in for about 30 seconds to, like I said, disperse all the energy. This way you don't get shocked. Your problem lies right up here with these two capacitors. A capacitor is supposed to be flush, flat. There's supposed to be no bulge to it. If there is, you've got a blown capacitor. So if I can demonstrate it here, let me get the camera just right. You can see that this one right here is flat. This one is bulged, even just a little bit. And I knew that one had ruptured because it had blew some kind of capacitor juice all over the inside panel here and it was running down the back of it and it was literally right across from the capacitor so I knew it was that capacitor. Now you have to have a little bit of soldering skills so if you're out of warranty uh, if you're if you're in warranty don't do this just take it back and get you another one but if you're out of warranty like I am and you don't want to go spending another 250 300 400 dollars on a, a television then you can do this if you have all you got to do is have minimal soldering skills I have minimal soldering skills um, I have soldered new batteries onto Sega Genesis uh, game cards basically uh, Sega Genesis games that had backup battery backup and the batteries had died you can't just like pop those batteries out you have to desolder them from the actual game card itself and then solder new ones back in so I've done that with great success so what we got to do here is remove this capacitor right here and put a new one on. Now these capacitors are, see if I can read it here, it's 350 volt 10 UV. I think that's what it said on it, 350 volt 10 UV. And you can actually find these um, on eBay or any electronic a site online and order them. You get I paid about nine bucks and got ten of them. So it's very inexpensive and all you have to do is just know how to solder a little bit. So what you have to do is you have to first once you get the back off of it you have to disconnect this ribbon cable, these two ribbon cables, this one, this one, and this one. And then remove one, two, three, four, five screws and take the motherboard off. Once you get the motherboard off, then we have to do a little desoldering, which I will show you next. All right, be right back. All right, guys, I got the motherboard off, and here is my setup. All right, 
these are like lighted jeweler glasses magnifying glasses comes with different strengths of magnification and these help immensely to uh, see the smaller uh, circuitries basically and when you get older like me it's a little difficult sometimes to see that fine detail of the circuit board and you kind of need to on some of these tinier things but for me it's not going to be too difficult if you don't have these because these are pretty good size but I'm going to use them anyway this here is a clamp in case you don't have something that you can prop it up against and not cause a fire <laughs> because that soldering iron can cause a fire and this is just a little uh, copper mesh that you can get to clean the soldering iron with you just stick the soldering iron in there and cleans tip off and this is my I think 30 buck soldering iron from Amazon and it comes with a little, little sponge just get it wet and wipe it off so it's not an expensive setup here and these right here are the 350V 10UF uh, capacitors that you need to fix this motherboard with. Got these on Amazon or uh, eBay for about nine bucks. And thankfully none of these are ruptured. They're all in good shape. So I'm gonna put the camera back on the tripod and we'll get busy here. All right, first things first, you gotta get yourself lined up here so you don't, don't unsolder the wrong spot so here's the capacitors this here is the blown one so we're gonna flip it over here and we're gonna desolder these two pins right here gonna desolder those that capacitor is gonna fall out and then we'll put a new one in alright now I've got the motherboard clamped and just make sure when you put the clamps on that you don't clamp on top of uh, circuitry that you could damage so just find a uh, empty space there uh, on your on the green section of the motherboard and do your best not to uh, clamp any circuitry so let's go ahead and desolder these two pieces here I'll go ahead and put these glasses on alright I set this to about 250 degrees we're going to see if that's enough to get it off there. Heating up the solder here. Actually, this is not hot enough. Uh, maybe so. Let's see. I'm going to crank this up about 300. All right. Give it a minute here. Right. Actually, what I may need to do is... Actually, I think I'm going to declamp this. And hold on to that myself. As I desolder it, try to pull it out. There we go. There we go. Coming loose. I can feel it now. I got to heat up this other old solder here. This other old solder is. Pretty tough here. Okay, oh, there we go. That one's out. All right, we got it. Okay. Now, let me try to clean that old solder up. So, here we go, guys. This is the blown capacitor. Now, before putting a capacitor back on, you have to make sure that it's going in the right direction. So when you're looking at the board here, see if I can show that to you here. Okay. The bottom side has a white line on it. So you want, when you put the new capacitor on, make sure the white line on the capacitor is aimed down. 
And when you do that, then you will know you have it in the right uh, setup. Okay, so actually I don't need to clean that old solder up. Yeah, actually I do, otherwise I ain't going to be able to get the capacitor through. So, let's see if I can get this off of here. Actually, let me get out my solder sucker here. See if I can... Clean that mess up. There we go. Alright, got that hole opened up. Let's get the next one. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead. As you can see here, find it, there it is. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I had to clean the solder out of the holes. Now those holes are open and ready for a new capacitor to be placed. Might have to use these to lean it up against for a second. Alright, let's go ahead and get one of these off of here. Alright. So like I said guys, you see that white line? That white line goes down on this make it match up Oop. there we go white line down now that's a little bit taller but that's okay long as it is a matching capacitor. Excuse me. As you can see here, it's a little bit longer. But that should be okay. As long as it has the matching power. 350 volt, 10 UV. And the other one is 350, 10 UV as well. So, now we're going to Flip it over here. I'm just going to hold my hand on this and let the capacitor hold itself in place. There we go. Now I'll go ahead and get out my solder and go ahead and let's clean this tip off a little bit. Now let's see. So right there or the little saw the little pins of the capacitor sticking out. Now we're just going to put a little dab of solder going around them. And first thing you want to do is put a little solder on the tip of your iron here, kind of tin the tip as they say. There we go. And then that was done. Another little bit of solder on it. Let's see here. Not quite yet. There we go. Now let me just double check, make sure that, that the solder is on there good. Yeah, connected to the board. Yeah, 
going all the way around so we're good I don't know if you can let's see here you see that little dab of solder sorry guys everything works in reverse when you're using a camera like this let's put a little solder on the end there and got it soldered back now to put the TV back together and see if it works actually excuse me first I'm gonna trim those down a little bit you don't want all that hanging off there you won't be able to get it back in so I'm gonna trim those down a little bit and see if this works now all right guys I got the TV put back together and uh, actually let me just let you know that I did go ahead and replace the uh, the other capacitor you remember the short one the original short one and then I put in a new tall one well I went ahead and got rid of the original short one and now I've got two tall uh, matching capacitors in there and now it's back together so let's see if it works Voila guys, there it is. For basically two bucks, I was able to fix this television. And if you know what to do with uh, soldering and taking this apart, now that you've seen the video, you can probably do it yourself for in about 30 minutes and save yourself $250, $300 or whatever it costs for one of these now. But uh, this is the Hisense 55R6E3 model uh, 55 inch 4k hdr 10 television all right guys i hope you've enjoyed this video stay tuned more to come